Hello, I'm Lee, welcome to iMind Blocks. In this video I'll be sharing with you how to set up Simple Mining.net, otherwise known as Simple Mining OS, or also called SMOZ. So SMOZ is an operating system designed for GPU miners. It's based on uh, Ubuntu, and what you can do is you can load an image up uh, from a USB pen drive, and your whole operating system will run from that. So the advantages are that it's um, super stable, it's built, uh, like I say, on Ubuntu, you're not going to have any interference from Windows updates or any uh, spying problems, those kind of issues. Uh, downsides are it doesn't support uh, Wi-Fi and also it doesn't support, um, oh sorry, there is a cost involved. It costs $2 a month, uh, but there's also kind of a, a free trial. There's no sign up or anything like that that you need to uh, worry about. They just give you some kind of credits on your account to get started. So it's really useful. I've been using this quite a long time now. Um, over a month or so for my um, the, the 13 GPU miner, which is now running uh, 12 GPUs. I'll, I'll talk about that more in another video. But I've been using the software. It's been working really well, really pleased with it. Um, so in this video, I'll be sharing with you um, how to get set up and start running um, simpleminer.net. So let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you what you need to do. Right, to so started. on the web browser, the page that we're currently on is simpleminer.net. And this is where you're going to download your files and it's also where you'll uh, interact and manage with your mining rigs because you can use this for like a remote uh, management um, tool. So requirements, you're going to need a uh, PC with a graphics card at least one. You're look, also going to need some kind of um, device to store the simple mining OS software. Um, I'm just going to be using this um, SanDisk. This is a 16 gigabyte uh, USB pen drive. Uh, but you need a minimum of 8 gigabytes. So you can also use a regular hard drive or an SSD um, to store the operating system. So PC, some somewhere to store your device. Uh, one other thing you also going to need as well is a um, wired Ethernet connection for your internet access. Um, Simple OS or SMOS does not support uh, Wi-Fi connections. So there are a couple of the basics that you are going to need. Smalls comes in three different flavors, so you can use it either for older HD series or like the R7 370s, which I've got. Um, you can use it with uh, RX 4 and 500 series graphics cards, or you can use it with NVIDIA graphics cards. So depending on which set of graphics cards you've got, you're going to download a different um, image to use as your operating system. So you see on the screen we've got this R series, so that is for your older hardware. Your RX series, obviously self-explanatory, 4 and 500 series, and this NV series is if you're using any NVIDIA hardware. So I'll be using this R series um, download and it supports um, the older HD series. It doesn't say on there, but it also supports um, R7 300 series as well. So what you need to do is uh, select the image that you require to match your hardware, and then you download it. These are quite big files, they're about 7 uh, gigabyte files, pretty big files. So I'll download this, um, in fact I've already done that. So you download that to your computer. Next up you're going to need this uh, flashing tool, so this one is called etcher.io. So download that tool and install it. If you go to our downloads folder you can see I've already done this. So we've got those files downloaded, we've got our image file and we've got our etcher uh, program which is going to put the image file onto our storage device. So I'll plug this in now, pop that in there, and it should come up. So we've got this uh, SanDisk Green 16GB, that's the one that we're using. Bear in mind that this software completely um, removes anything, it will completely um, partition and format your device so you need a completely blank separate um, device to store the simple minor OS software on it don't try and partition your hard drive or anything like that you'll end up uh, wiping the whole lot so next we start up the Etcher program go for the installation process It's only a small lightweight program. And then we have to select the image. So we're going to select the image, it's in our downloads folder, and we're using this simple minor R, oh, this is the version that I'm using. Select that, and then we're going to select the device that we're writing to. So you see it's already pre-selected. 
put a SanDisk Cruiser Blade 16 gigabytes. So just double check the device that you're writing to, and then you're going to flash it. So it will start the flashing process. Uh, depending on your computer hardware, it will take between um, 10 minutes to half an hour. Um, sometimes the writing process can be quite a long time if you've got like a, a slow USB pen drive or something. It can uh, take quite a long time to get that written. Uh, but let that go, and then we'll come back and um, continue on from there. Right, so the Etch program has finished writing the image to the drive. So you might notice that it kind of unmounts and then remounts. Um, if that doesn't happen, once it's finished, you can unplug the, uh, the USB stick and pop it back in. And you should find it comes up as two drives. If it says do you need to format it, just click cancel or close. You don't need to do that. And then on one of the drives, so we've got H and I, one of them you'll see this config.txt file. So that's a really simple text file that you need to edit. So we can just open it with a notepad, just double click on it. And you've got this user email equals, and here you just want to add in your email address. So enter that, file and save, close that. And then you're finished with the USB pen drive, so you don't need to do anything more with it. So at this point you can unplug it and now we can take it to the uh, miner. Right, so we're in the garage now. You can see the El Cheapo rig. We've got the four R7370s. There's also a RX560 on the end there. Um, I've unplugged that. There's also a hard drive. I've unplugged that as well because we're just going to be booting from the USB uh, pen drive. This little widget here. So let's get this plugged in. You can plug it into any USB port. Um, doesn't really matter whether it's a USB uh, one or two or like a legacy port or USB three. Doesn't really matter. Um, so we're just going to plug it in. I'll go over the uh, USB three because it's kind of easier. Need to um, kind of lift this. Need more hands. I'm going to pop him in there, and then we are going to shut the rig off. I didn't realise it was already on. It doesn't matter too much. And then we're going to fire it up. So I've got this rig set to auto boot um, upon power failure, so that should fire up. So sorry, just forgot to mention, you might need to uh, configure your BIOS to boot from the USB pen drive. Um, just check your BIOS um, options. By default, most BIOSes will boot up from a USB device. Um, so you just press delete when you start up your uh, computer and then you can edit that uh, without too much uh, issue. And um, sometimes biases have another option, you can press F11 to boot from your USB pen drive, but most uh, modern motherboards will, will boot up automatically without any issue. Okay, so it looks like they've changed the uh, the miner act actually, because um, on my one I don't have any of this graphical uh, interface, so it looks like they've changed it, and at the moment it appears that we are automatically mining uh, Zcash. So what I'll do is I'll go to upstairs, uh, I'll show the um, the main sort of interface, we'll log in and I'll show you how to, to modify that. Right, uh, mine is now running downstairs, so from this point onwards we can remotely manage the uh, miner. So we're back at simplemining.net and from here we need to register our accounts. So it's really simple, all it is is an email address and your password. I've already gone through this process, but you obviously would need to do that. So it's email address, your password, repeat your password. Um, to let you know, the password needs to be at least uh, 10 characters. Once you've registered, you just need to confirm your email address, go to your email account, click on the link, and then you verify yourself. After that, you can then log in. So if it's not already obvious, make sure that your email that you enter here is the same as the one you added into your config file. So let's um, log in. Right, so once you're inside the dashboard, you should see something that looks like this. So I'll break down each one of the uh, columns and explain the, um, the basic operation for you. So you've got the name over here. It also tells you the rig version, IP address of the rig. Uh, group, you can set your uh, mining rigs by um, clusters. Status, you've got the uptime for the rig. It tells you the total power uptime as well as the mining time. And it also shows you the restarts of the rig. The console is kind of like a uh, breakdown of what's currently going on with the miner in a simplified form. 
So here you can see that it's got uh, four of our GPUs and it tells you the hash rate for each of the GPUs. You also notice it's got zero hash next to it. That's because this mining uh, miner is not in dual mining mode, we're just in solo mining mode. Next up, you've got the temperature of each one of your uh, graphics cards and also the current fan speed. So you can see we're just under 60 for most of them and we're at 50% fan. Next column is core clock speed and also your memory clock speed. So it shows you uh, that for each of your graphics cards. And then on the right hand side, you've got this action. So here you can kind of change some of the features of the miner. So first off, if we click on the console, it'll give you a, a better um, showing of what's happening on, on the miner itself. So if you, if you had a monitor attached to your miner, this is effectively what the miner program would show you. So it's just kind of a, an overview of that. You can see it's Claymore Shield Ethereum miner, tells you what you're mining and the hash rate for each of the cards, GPUs, port that connected to, etc. So this is kind of like a virtual screen. Next up, we've got the overclocking options. So you can uh, configure your miner in two different ways. You can use this overclocking tool, and it allows you to set the core clocks and the memory clocks for each of your graphics cards. So you can do it um, so it kind of sets one for all, or you can do it um, individually for each graphics card, like this, for example. That sort of formatting. And because we've got four of the same graphics cards, uh, we can just use 1100 and 1450. Power limit is the um, just like normal sort of power limit on uh, MSR Afterburner or Trix. So you can increase the power limit if you want to kind of boost the performance of your cards, or you can reduce the power limit, which will reduce the wattage of your cards. It'll run cooler, but you might run into stability issues. So for most people, I'd say set the power limit between three and four, um, and that should be uh, fine for most people. Target temperature, you can just leave it at 75 degrees, and minimum fan speed, I've got it set to a minimum fan speed of 50. So you probably want to go with some similar kind of settings to those. So you can modify the um, clock speeds, <clears throat> power limit, temperature, and um, fan speed within this interface, uh, and you can also do it within the miner if you prefer that way of doing it, which I'll come on to in just a second. So I'll just close that. If you make any adjustments here, make sure you click save, and then the miner will reboot and resave and it will start with your uh, desired settings. Uh, you've got the option to reload just the miner. You've got the option to reboot the rig if it has like a complete uh, failure. Uh, you've got the simple rig resetter, that's like a separate device, you're not gonna use that, and you also, you can delete the profile. Now, you might be wondering how to set your miner to mine specific different types of um, coins or use different miners. So that's all done from this options um, button over here. So if we select this, it gives us like a drop down and it shows us all of the miners that are kind of built within the, the SMOS. So you can see uh, miners that are available for the different types of graphics cards. So you've got one that are compatible with the R series, one that ones that are compatible with the RX series, and then the other ones that are your NVIDIA cards. So at the moment I'm using Claymore's Ethereum Miner 9.6. So what you want to do is uh, for whatever miner that you want to do, or whatever coin that you uh, wish to use, you pick your miner first, so you go down and you select it. So at the moment I've got uh, Claymore's ETH, ETH miner version 9.6. And then once you've selected it, it will highlight it green, and it will give you this line here. So this is where you edit your um, config file, so if you've seen my previous videos, um, you can edit the config file, or you can edit the batch file. Um, so this effectively becomes where you um, amend the configuration. So just to show you, so if we've got my Claymore's ETH miner, and then we say, um, I've got it in Ethereum only mode. So this would be my batch file for mining Ethereum and in Ethereum only mode. So you can see here, this is the normal uh, configuration file, or batch file that I would use. So you would just copy and paste this whole section here, or you could do it in, let's say, just to show you how it uh, varies. Let's say I want to do a, dual mine um, decreed at the same time. So I'm just gonna copy this. Um, we'll go back to it, make sure we select it. Just gonna paste it in there. And uh, then I'll break down uh, just a bit of the config. So the first part is for watchdog and restart. You can just leave that as it is. Then we've got my configuration. So we're connected into the ethermine.org pool. And then we've got my address, we've got worker one. Just change that to um, El Cheapo, 
And then we're also connecting to the decreed pool. Again, it's got your user details there. So yeah, this part here is just where you put your normal um, configuration. Um, we've got the, the intensity set to uh, 15 for decree. Then you go all the way down to the bottom and then save all options and reload all rigs. So what should happen now is the miner should restart and when it restarts, we should be going from uh, Ethereum only mode to dual mining mode. So we'll just give that a minute and let it uh, restart. Okay, so that's updated now. So from this uh, console part, you can see that we're hashing, we've got a total of 38.55 mega hashes for Ethereum. And then the second part, the dual mining is 578 for Decreed. Uh, if you click on the console, you can see a bit better breakdown of those figures. So that's how you change different mining modes. If we go back to options again. So let's say you wanted to mine um, Zcash, something like that. You would go down and select your miner. So you've got this Claymore Zcash miner. You select it. And in this box here, you enter your configuration. So your pool, your address, nickname, that sort of stuff. Click on save down the bottom. It'll, the miner will restart and then you'll be mining Zcash. And that's how you change uh, between the different options and mine different coins. So there's lots of different miners that are in there. So you can mine pretty much all of the main GPU um, coins uh, using this interface. Oh, sorry, one more thing to add in, um, the fees. Like I said, it was um, $2 a month. So if you get this fee balance up here, they give you some starting credit. I think they start you off with about 30 cents. Um, and so you can mine for about a week uh, without uh, paying any fees. Um, after that, you need to um, keep your account effectively topped up. So you click on this uh, fee balance, and then from there, you've got uh, different options. So you can pay by a Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum Classic, or Zcash. And what you do is you just top up your account, and then your account balance will kind of reduce slowly over, over the month. So you need to keep your balance in a, in a positive position. So always have a little bit of credit on your account. Um, but it will cost you about $2 a month to use this service. Right, so we're back downstairs now. I just want to show you quickly what it looks like with the uh, miner behind me, uh, and that is it. So they've changed the, the interface. Uh, previously, it was just a command line interface. Now they've got this uh, little bit of a GUI display, so that's uh, something a little bit different. So anyway, that is it for this video. Hopefully you have enjoyed watching, you've learned something, and uh, you can put this um, operating system to action and um, you know use it with some good results. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave those in the comments area below, anything that you think I can improve on let me know. Um, if you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you didn't like it, then uh, let me know as well. Uh, let me know why you didn't like it, What you know, how I could have done um, a better job for you guys. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.